But I want to take a step back and talk about leadership, specifically leadership in STEM. For those of you who don't know what STEM is, it's science, technology, engineering, and math. And that's where I do a lot of my work with Incredipal. It's really the reason I started Incredipal is I saw a lot of people in STEM that necessarily know how to, to do leadership or personal growth. We learn all the math and science, but the relationship part is not something we always do well. So Nala STEM or Nala is focused on people who are underrepresented in STEM. So those who are really undergraduates or graduate students who are trying to go after the degree, trying to get jobs in academia, all of that stuff. So you talk about Nala STEM, what is that? So Nala STEM in itself is an acronym and I'll get to what it stands for. And it's based on another acronym. So I don't know, I, I mentioned, I think I mentioned on the first episode, I talked a little bit about LSAM the Louis Stokes Alliance for Minority Participation. And I was involved in one that was headquartered at Iowa State. So LSAMP has a lot of different alliances. I think right now up to 56 uh, that I know of. Um, the one I was a part of was Inspire, Iowa, Illinois, Nebraska STEM Partnership in Research and Education. It's a mouthful. So just say Inspire. And so I was involved with that. I was able to do undergraduate research uh, while I was um, a sophomore and junior. So they helped me with some funding my sophomore summer and they supplemented some of my research funding in my junior and senior year. And then it's just been a really cool network because it's really, it's focused on research, but they also provide a lot of different opportunities and workshops talking about um, either resumes or interviews or just how to be successful in life um, and it, it's been really cool and I've been able to give back in that organization as well so I, I graduated in 2016 uh, me and another uh, student or alumni I should say uh, Queenster we were able to start Inspire LSAMP Alumni Committee or ILAC because we love our acronyms and we were doing that just basically because we didn't want to grow up we wanted to stay connected, but that is just uh, looking back. That is a uh, whole idea of leadership is staying connected and doing something that other people have not done before. So we were not the first people who, who were alumni of Inspire. We we're not the only people who probably have had this idea, but for, I think we're the only ones who had the idea, voiced it to each other and said, let's go do it. We didn't necessarily know what was going to come out of it. We thought, hey, it was just the two of us. Uh, if we could just come back to different workshops. Actually, I think it was more a selfish reason at first to say like, hey, we want to come back to workshops. We want to interact with students, um, help out with our, however we can. So just the two of us the first year, we reached out to some other people. We were able to grow it out. Um, we started offering mentorship, doing more workshops uh, for a couple of years. And so I think we had about 20 different people, which doesn't seem like a lot, but I think on average, like maybe year to year, there's about 20 scholars. So so just after a couple of years, have 20, we thought it was pretty good for the alumni, alumni group. And I had reached out to another um, LSAMP organization. So like I mentioned, LSAMP is nationwide, 56 different alliances. And this one was a regional center of excellence. And I remembered when I was in in college, I'd gone to the conferences, I think three, yeah, three years in a row, like 2014, 2016, I got in their conference. And so I knew that they were kind of a, a hub. There are more people from other alliances that went to this conference. And so I thought it would be a good way to get connected, uh, see if there are other alumni groups out there. I had been doing some research on LinkedIn, basically just typing in LSAM, trying to figure out are there, what are the different groups, adding them, trying to figure out um, can we collaborate on some things? Because something that I've learned and I'm continuing to learn in leadership as part of the Maxwell Leadership Certified Member, which I'll talk a little bit about more about later, is that one is too small of a number to achieve greatness. It's too small a number to do something that really leaves a legacy. So it could have been really easy, either myself or Queenster, when we were talking about doing something with alumni and saying, hey, I have this idea, you have this idea, we're gonna go about it our separate ways. 
but there is a synergy. There's something really powerful that happens when you just take a step back and you decide to come together on different ideas. And I will say, like, we're different people. There's, like, times we didn't always agree or, or we went more Queenster's way, we, we went more my way, or we just came to a solution. But that's part of leadership. That's part of growing. It's understanding that you're not always going to have your way. Like, there's sometimes you feel like um, it's your way or the highway. And I would say, like, that is not good leadership. Good leadership is able to learn from their people. Sometimes your people are wrong and you have, you set them straight. Or, But I think it's really critical that you hear from them first. Because a lot of times, what in my experiences in manufacturing and in speaking and coaching is that people just want to be heard. People want to be heard. Not to say that you can always fix the issue right away or maybe you can't even change anything at all. But people want to know that you can meet them where they're at, you understand the situation, and you can empathize with them. And that's it. Like, sometimes that's it. Like, there's some situations, like, when, I, when I've when worked in different manufacturing jobs and people will be complaining about things or start mumbling about it and I'll start asking about what's going on and how I can help. And you just see, like, a switch like, I can see that the switch in, in their head happening that they feel like someone is actually listening to someone. Someone actually cares. And I do care, especially with the, the different roles I've had. I've been able to uh, remove boundaries and help people um, as a leader, as a either if it's like a, a leader that doesn't necessarily have supervision or a direct leader of them, I've been able to help out. But I think it's really powerful if you're a leader, to make sure that you are focused on the people that serve in leadership. Well, I was just at a conference this past October, and they talked about Nala STEM and Nala Group and Paul, Paul and this, Paul and that. And at least in that realm, people see that uh, Nala STEM is something that I created, which it, uh, I, will, I won't be bashful and say that I didn't create it. It was my idea to reach out, but I will say that it's one thing to have an idea, but at the same time, like I said, one is too small of a number to achieve greatness. I realized that this is not something I can do by myself. I've been able to reach out and build a great team that, like, my team is awesome. Like, there's a lot of stuff that happens in the mentorship and outreach. I like to stay in the, in the loop on a lot of things, but I also trust my team, and that's just my style of leadership, that I trust you to know what you need to do and to ask for help, I'll also offer help as well. But just the overall idea of leadership in STEM and mentorship in, in STEM is so critical. The relationships I've developed, the communication skills I've had to develop or hone in on just to make sure I'm getting my point across. Um, I can't tell you the numerous presentations I've had to give, whether virtually or in person talking about what Nala is, the passion that it gives me uh, to be able to come back to conferences, the smile it puts on people's faces to be able to be a part of something like that, and even meeting members. So it, it was really cool because I was, we were able to send, I think, about seven different alumni to this last conference in October, and it was the first time we were able to do something like that through COVID. A lot of stuff has been virtual. And it was the first time a lot of us were really meeting together in person. And so uh, that was really cool to see as well. But so that's that's a little bit about Nala, kind of the history uh, behind it. But it's it's just something that I'm really passionate about. Uh, so I wanted to share more about it. 